And welcome back, Cara Andretto, Cara's Couture Cakes, and this is the second part of our Sugar Rose video tutorial. I'm starting off with my tweezers and pulling out all that great little foam that helped shape my petals in the last video. Now we're going to move on to the tools that we're going to need to add a calyx to the bottom of our rose and finish it off. First, you need your cell pad. You also need a good cutting surface, which is right underneath. It's my self-healing mat from Fiskars. I have a link to that in my blog post. I have three different sizes of calyx cutters, five point calyx, some calyx green gum paste, my small medium ball tool, a acrylic rolling pin, my paintbrush, a little bit of cornstarch in a poof, and my sugar glue. First, I'm going to size my calyx to my rose by putting it over the back in the stem. I want to see approximately where it's going to come up on my flower to pick the right size. Then I'm going to roll out my gum paste, nice and thin. I don't want it thick. See that? It's less than a sixteenth of an inch thin. And I'm going to cut out my calyx. I do like to pull it away. It gives you cleaner edges. And if you rub your finger along the edge of your cutter, you'll get a real nice clean edge. I'm going to use my ball tool to elongate them a little and to thin the edges and to give them a little bit of shape by pulling in with the ball. Next, I'm going to apply sugar glue all over every little part of this because I want it to sit completely flat against the bottom of my flower. I'm going to loop it up via that little stem and I'm going to press it down firmly. Now, if you have any areas that are a little bit ugly on the bottom or not sitting perfectly, use this to cover it up. Next, we're going to do the fun stuff. We're getting out our petal dust. These are all Global Sugar Art uh, colors. Yellow petal dust, buttercup petal dust, pink and carnation petal dust. I did get these all at GSA, but I believe as of the recording of this, they're changing over to Alan Tetralt's line. Totally worth getting though. I use my offset spat to pull out just a little bit of each one. Truly this stuff goes a long way. Don't take out too much. There is a way to save it and to bring it all back, but not always the most fun process to try and get them back in your little petal dust containers. Okay, now I'm going to start off with my round brush. I believe this is a number six round brush. It's an acrylic tip. It's one of my favorite to dust with. It's a little long, but it's also very soft. So it's going to be gentle on those petals, but it's going to get into the areas I really want it to get into. So I'm going to start off with my, my light yellow dust. And I'm just going to use that kind of as my base over the entire flower. Now I'm looking for peach here. So starting off with my lightest is kind of essential because I want to build colors and I want to get some depth of color inside those folds, but I need a good base, a good warm base color first. Let's zip along a little fast here, getting all that light yellow in there. It may be tough to see in this video, but it was a really good base. Now let's move over into our buttercup yellow, which is one of my favorite warmest but still gentle yellows. It's not overly indulgent or rich or saturated, but it is very nice and deep. And now I'm going to start pouncing into those areas to really work that down into the center and in between some of those petal folds. This is going to give it depth and dimension and it's going to kind of represent, um, I should say reflect, what a real rose looks like. It's always a little bit more intense in color in the center because there isn't as much light passing through those petals. Likewise, where these petals come together and fold out of each other, there's always going to be a little bit more shadow down there and you really want to accentuate that with a little deeper colored petal dust because you never know what the light's going to be like in the venue where you're going to be dropping off your gorgeous cake. Now I'm pretty sure you can imagine what we're going to do here. We're going to go in and keep working it. Even though I'm fast forwarding this, it's really hard for me to do that in this video because I truly do love watching these flowers take shape. You can see it's starting to turn yellow and we're starting to get some nice definition. I'm going in now with my pink dust, warming it up a little bit more, bringing it a little bit closer to peach, and then adding in some of my carnation dust. I'm going super fast. I wish I could really dust this fast, don't you? Again, I'm focusing on that very center part and getting some real depth in there. But now I'm going to go in and tweak. I want it a little bit warmer. I'm going to bring that pink up just a little bit and make it look more peachy than pinky. And I'm going to use my buttercup for this because it is, it's a warmer yellow and a deeper yellow 
than the yellow dust that I used in the beginning. Now I use this brush, this angled brush, and I use it to get those very edges to give them some age. That's going to darken the edges um, and, and give it that, that kind of natural, slightly damaged look that you see in roses or in petals in general. I'm going to keep going like that with those petals, but I'm also going to move over to my calyx. My calyx does get a little love too. I'm going to use apple green, moss green, and khaki green to mix them up and to apply to that calyx. And then the magic happens. We're going to steam it. I have this great little kettle. Well, I had it while I was filming this as of this voiceover. She's gone and it makes me sad, but you want to get it from all angles. You want to move it around nicely to make sure you get steam in every area. And yes, it does look a little shiny. However, that is okay because those petals do have a little bit of a reflective quality. You don't want to hold it over your steamer for too long, otherwise you're going to melt your sugar. We all know this though, right? But look at the difference. You're steaming because it intensifies your color, it sets your dusts, and it gives you that lifelike quality to all of your petals. I don't do any flowers that I don't steam. I really do love the steaming process. I don't steam my cakes, but I do steam my flowers. <laughs> Now you're going to hang your flower upside down until it dries, which can take, you know, a few hours depending on your ambient humidity. But now we're going to attach some leaves that we made, and I suppose I can do a, I can do a little lesson on leaves too, but we're going to attach them to our flower stem or our wire. You're going to start by pinching your floral wire after you pull it, and you pull it to activate that glue, but we're going to pinch it around there and then we're going to slowly turn it, but keep our tape at an angle so that it comes down the stem. Once you get a little bit started, go ahead and push that up towards the base. You don't want to do it right next to the flower initially, otherwise your hands might hit a petal or, you know, you just want to stay away from your finished flower because it's gorgeous. So I'm going to start that, and once you really have a knack for this, you can just kind of spin and go down pretty quickly. I'm doing this actually really, really slow to show you guys. I'm actually much, much faster at this. This is one of my favorite parts of finishing a flower. Is that ridiculous? I think it's ridiculous. I can be ridiculous sometimes, you know. Just be careful when you're doing this that you're not holding your flower too close to your table, or as you're spinning, you might knock a petal into your table. Stretching again to activate the glue to get right towards the end of that petal. Oh, that's not a petal, Kara. The end of that wire. Then as I bring it to the end, I'm going to start pinching it to cover the very end of the wire, but to also remove the tape cleanly. Or not so cleanly. <laughs> of course, because I'm doing it for a tutorial. It's going to do the opposite of what I say. But we're going to be going down the stem again anyways, so it's mostly covered. Now we're going to add our leaves, and I already have the leaves, each individual, attached to a main stem, and the way I did that is exactly what I'm going to be showing you to attach that grouping to the main flower stem. So I will have brought those together in the same way that I'm going to show you now. I also have a single leaf that I'm going to pair on there as well. Before I decide exactly where I want to put them or what height I want to put them at, I'm going to kind of just match them up next to my flower. And now to be able to work them easily alongside the flower rather than having them sit at the same height, I'm bending my, my leaf wire just a little so that they come out. They're going to have to be bent anyways so that they sit away from the flower and not like completely cradling and hugging the flower. But also, you may want to give it just a little bit more of a bend than you're going to let it sit with finally, just so that you can work more easily with it. Now we're going to go on and add more of our floral tape to the very top of the, of the flower wire. Then we're going to bring it down just enough that it can start to... I like that placement. I think that's a good height. And so I'm going to start to 
secure these together simply by wrapping them together at the same time, exactly where I want it placed. You want to make sure your tape is right at the very top of the bend for your, uh, for your leaves. That way it looks more natural. Now, do you have to go to this extent with the calyx and the leaves and it wrapped perfectly and bent perfectly for every rose? No. Some roses are going to be in clusters and you're not even really going to need leaves and you may not even need a calyx depending on how you're presenting them. I do a calyx no matter what because you never know what angle someone's going to try and get in and look at your flowers and your cake at. And that calyx just gives it that last little bit of realism. And it's those details that really they really make your design that much more successful. That may be that moment where someone goes, wow, instead of just going, oh, that's pretty. Can you imagine just getting an, oh, that's pretty, and then, oh, wow, they really went the extra mile. It doesn't take that much more time. So now we have those secured together. I've pulled off the tape. Now I'm going to readjust the leaves to where they look nice with our flower. I think that's kind of gorgeous. And they're all finished. It's exactly what I was looking for, that rich, beautiful peach. And thanks for watching, guys. I'm glad I re-narrated this for you. Subscribe to my channel, head over to my blog, and sign up for my newsletter, and you'll get all this great stuff right in your inbox.